Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to discuss current affairs of 26 September 2023. And what are the current affairs we are going to see here in this session that will be useful for your UPSC and your state service examinations also. Okay, so let us see the current affairs and we are going to see each and every article which is important from our examination point of view. So the first important article here it is about Tibetans. Tibetans are seeking more autonomy not separation from China says the Lai Lama. So here you have to know about exactly where is this Tibet located. Location of Tibet. And here you have to see what is this Indo-Tibetan policy. Okay, and what is the role played by this Dalai Lama in this Indo-Tibetan policy? So all these things that you have to remember and we are going to discuss this topic and this topic will come under our part of post-independent India. Okay, so because here this topic or because of this convention or agreement which signed between India that is British India and as well as a China and Tibet which happened at that time and later on this Tibet was occupied by China. So because of this we need to study this article from our post independent India point of view and always this Dalai Lama is in news because he will be demanding for autonomy. Okay more autonomy for this Tibet. So this article is at most important. So in the same first page you can see other articles like Monsoon begins its withdrawal. So here in our Indian geography, we will be studying chapter that is called as climate. So in this climate chapter of Indian geography, we will be studying about monsoon in detail. So as you all know that whenever I T sees it, that is intertropical convergence zone from equator that is 0 degrees latitude it is moving towards 23 and half degree north okay so here earlier normal in the equinox condition this ITCZ will be present at equator but in summer solstice that is nothing but summer in this northern hemisphere time so this ITCZ will be moving towards this 23 and a half and as you all know that this 23 and a half which is passing through India that means here low pressure will be formed over India and not only this ITCZ but there are number of factors which are influencing Indian monsoon system like even here we have the presence of Tibet so because of this Tibet also Yes, it is increasing the low pressure conditions on our India. So what happens? So here the winds, they will start moving from equator towards India. And here we will be having two branches of winds. Arabian Sea branch and Bay of Bengal branch. Okay, so let us draw image with a very much clarity so that you can understand how this withdrawal is happening. Okay, so let us see this is our Indian part and here this is Arabian Sea and this is our Bay of Bengal. So here monsoon winds they will be moving in this direction and because of this we will be getting two branches. Okay, one side we will have Arabian Sea and another side we will be having this Bay of Bengal branch. So here we have Western Ghats. And here we have Aravalli ranges and here in the northeastern part we have lot of mountain ranges like for example Purvanchal. Okay, so these winds which are carrying moisture from this Arabian Sea whenever they are hitting this western ghats. So in this coastal region they will be causing rainfall. Rainfall is caused in this coastal region. And in this Bay of Bengal branch will be moving like this and it will be causing this rainfall in this northeastern part and they will be moving forward and finally this Bay of Bengal branch and Arabian Sea branch they will be meeting 
and one more thing here is whenever winds are moving from south towards north rainfall decreases because the amount of moisture which is carrying by these winds automatically decreases so that the rainfall will be decreased so what happened so by the month of october and november so again the reversal of winds happen so in this reversal of winds so they will be moving in this direction now okay so by the end of december so there will be the withdrawal of this monsoonal winds completely happen so the by month of november and december in the northern part we experience winter and even here you have to understand one more concept that is uh, that is october heat so october heat is a concept which is relating to our withdrawal of monsoon or retreating of monsoons retreating of monsoon or withdrawal of monsoon okay is that clear so this is about this topic and we are going to have a detailed discussion on that as well and next topic it is about asian games so on the second day of asian games india is performing well especially in some fields okay like cricket and as well as air rifle etc so you have to follow that because we can't predict upsc sometimes you may get question from this area as well so this is about this first page and in this city page there is nothing much important and you can directly move on to this states page and because of elections in number of first states now most of the articles are political articles don't spend much time on that political articles they will be not bring any benefit to you it is waste of your time and this editorial page there are some articles so it is regarding so this topic so this topic which is regarding kaveri water management so this kaveri river dispute it is between two states now that is karnataka and tamil nadu so th what is the background here is tamil nadu went to supreme court regarding the release of water and supreme court said that karnataka need to release water to tamil nadu but now what happening so even this karnataka is having issues and tamil nadu is having issues so the first type of issue here is in karnataka you might know about bangalore the famous city so some areas in karnataka they are facing already water crisis so karnataka says that yes we have some cities here facing water crisis so that we are not going to allow the water to enter into tamil nadu but tamil nadu says that most of the crops or most of the agriculture is dependent on this kaveri river water okay so this is the issue between this karnataka and tamil nadu and now in karnataka there are some protests which is doing by the farmers regarding the release of this water is happening so because of this again this is a news and here you have to know about river kaveri and even in our polity point of view we have article 262 and article 263 which talks about interstate water disputes okay so because of this articles which present in our constitution so we can come up with authorities or the management okay so this is about this article in detail and next topic it is about g20 diplomacy and shifting world order so number of times we discussed about this g20 and we discussed about the what are the challenges of this g20 and what are the opportunities and recently 18th g20 summit which held in new delhi and we already discussed about highlights right so some of the highlights were so euro sorry african union which is going to get membership permanent membership in this uh, g20 
and many countries they talked about achieving of carbon neutrality and we also came up with this biofuel okay network etc so these are the some highlights and here you have to think about way forward how can we improve the functioning of this g20 so all these things we already discussed in our earlier lectures so try to do revision that's it so nothing more nothing less and next topic is here war in caucasus okay so here there is one disputed area between armenia and azerbaijan so that region is nagorno karabakh region so from this topic how can you expect a question in your prelims so if you have gone through 2023 prelims so this question appeared like so they said about this karabakh region the question it is about karabakh and which country so there are three cities or three areas in conflict is given and they asked whether that pair is correct or not so this nagorno karabakh region is a dispute region between armenia and azerbaijan so you have to remember this is that clear and next topic is children a key at missed demographic in artificial intelligence regulation yes because of increasing of advancement in science and technology yes we are coming up with new developments every day so day by day we are coming up with developments and because of increased use of artificial intelligence yes we are also facing some issues from economy side from society side from ethics side etc so we are facing this issues so because of this countries like european union china and us they are coming up with laws or regulations of this artificial intelligence so in same way india also came up with the data protection law okay and even we are trying to bring up the regulation to control this artificial intelligence but here this article says that we are excluding children in this artificial intelligence regulations so here this article says that india is to host first ever global summit on artificial intelligence this october so, so here in this upcoming month so india is hosting the first ever global summit okay so it is nothing but global partnership on artificial intelligent so why because artificial intelligence is very important especially if we want to move towards development yes we need to take help of technology and there is one prospect which says that here there is increasing importance of artificial intelligence it will contribute about 500 billion dollars to indian economy by 2025 okay so here on one side we are getting lot of benefits from this artificial intelligence but on another side there is also some issues okay because here we are facing some challenges of this artificial intelligence for example there are issues of addiction there will be issues on mental health and as well as overall safety okay so here especially in children they don't know what to use and what not to use because of lack of that much aware self awareness right so because of this children might be might be get affected if there is extensive use of this artificial intelligence so this is a thing which mainly said and we are going to see this topic in a very very great detail and is at most important and if you move on to this opinion page this article is talking about women's equality as you all know that recently special session of parliament conducted from 18th september to 22 september so in this session women reservation bill which had been passed in both lok sabha and rajya sabha so this bill which is talking about providing of one third reservation for women in lok sabha and as well as state legislative assemblies correct so which also includes a reservation for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes okay 
so here this article says that so if you pass in this bill and if this bill it is going to become an act then it will provide a route for women equality so here you have to focus on one concept called as gender equality so this gender equality is wider term when you are compared with that of this women equality so here you have to see what are the reasons behind the lowering of status of women in the society i am not feminist here but the article which is saying here is in our society we are having gender discrimination and even we have this global gender gap report so in this gender gap report also india's rank is very much bad so because of this i can say that yes gender discrimination is seen in our society and you have to see what are the reasons for this gender inequality and you have to see what is the way forward okay so this is about this topic and if you move on here in this data point you can see over 60 percentage of urban kids spend 3 hours daily on entertainment apps itself okay so here we can connect this topic okay we can connect this topic with this artificial intelligence also to some extent right so here because of this children who are become addicted with some gaming platforms and social media yes what happens so there will be some impact on the future life of the children so whenever this children they are coming in contact with this social media platforms and gaming platforms so parents need to give the consent so this is the idea behind this and let me know your opinion like how can we decrease children spend okay children's time in this entertainment apps so these are some um, important articles okay so now let us try to see the detailed analysis of these topics and later on we will come back to this hindu newspaper again is that clear so if you have any doubts so please post your doubts in the comment box so that in the next class we are going to discuss that so here this article says that tibetans they are asking for more autonomy but not political separation from china so this is a thing or statement which is given by dalai lama so in this context you have to focus on what is this india's tibet policy so where is tibet located so let us try to draw a map i am not drawing the exact map so here we have this tibet okay so this is the northern part and here we have this tibet okay so tibet it is a plateau region and here we have our himalayas so this is the plateau and beyond this part we have china so if you see this map that i drawn now so you might be understanding that india is not sharing the direct boundary here in this lac region so it is tibet that is sharing boundary but china occupied this tibet okay is that clear so if you move on to this article it says that india makes 3500 kilometers of boundary at lac region with this tibet autonomous region but what happened in 1914 that means even we got independence before we got independence tibetan representatives along with china they signed shimla convention with british india and they came up with delineation of boundaries that is determining of their boundaries with the help of this shimla convention of 1914 so you may get a question like so shimla convention is signed between which and which which and which countries so that time we didn't, we didn't get the independence right so you have to say that is british india china and tibet so china has accessed this tibet that is china occupied this tibet in year 1950 that means after we got independence in 1947 in 1950 yet china occupied this tibet and it violated the shimla convention and actually now between india and china this mac mohan line that is dividing these two countries 
and even after this china occupied this uh, tibet in 1950 in 1954 india signed an agreement with china to recognize this tibet as tibet region of india so this is the mistake of india which is done so india signed an agreement with china and india accepted that tibet from now it is part of china it is called as tibet region of china and later on in 1959 that led to Tibet uprising. So China started its ex, uh, its uh, its ag allegations, aggression among these Tibets. So because of this, that led to Tibetan uprising. So at that time, normally Tibet it is famous for Buddhism. Okay. So the Buddhist leader was normally called as Dalai Lama there. So Dalai Lama, he is the spiritual leader of Tibetan people and many of his followers because of this uprising they fled to india okay india and as well as even some parts of nepal so former prime minister at that time the then prime minister that is jawaharlal nehru he gave refugees okay shelter and he also helped them to set up tibetan government in exile okay so this is the thing that happened in 1950s and the Indian policy is that Dalai Lama is a spiritual leader and the Tibetan community which is present in India. There are more than 1 lakh people that fled into India. They are not allowed to undertake any political activity. So this is the policy of India at that time and this was a great mistake that we did at that time. So in that event, increasing of tensions which happened between India and China and later on in 1962 war between india and china happened so one of that reason here is because of this tibetan community okay so after that what happened because of increasing of tensions between this india and china there has been shift in india's tibet policy and this shift in the policy year marks indian government actively managing with dalai lama in public forums so what happened at that time onwards because of this increasing of uh, assertions or increasing of tensions between india and china now india started supporting this dalai lama in the public forums and in the very recent times now there is rise in anger and more radical ranks in that is freedom groups and now here they are demanding independent tibet but now Dalai Lama is saying that we want autonomy, we don't want independence. So this is the thing which is mainly said by Dalai Lama now. Okay, so this is about this topic and I hope it is very much clear. And next topic is monsoon begins its withdrawal. So here we have to know some concepts regarding this retreating monsoon. Okay, so if you see context it says that it is beginning of the end of southwest monsoon. Okay, so it is the beginning of the end of southwest monsoon this year. So this is a thing which announced by Indian Meteorological Department. IMD said that yes, there is end of there is end of the southwest monsoon, and he said that the withdrawal which mainly started from West Rajasthan. So normally, as I said, this monsoon winds they will hit this Kerala coast on June first. And they will be moving okay from here and here so this Bay of Bengal branch and this Arabian Sea branch they will meet so after meeting again the winds they will moving back okay so this movement back or this moving back of this monsoon winds happens normally from northwestern part of India especially from this Rajasthan okay so if you see some details it says that this is a week behind the normal withdrawal date. So normal withdrawal date will be September 17th. But now today is September 26th and it is very late. And especially you can see in the month of August we didn't find much rainfall also. So we are having deficit of 36% less rainfall. So we have 36% of less rainfall in the month of August. So why? The reason here is El Nino. So whenever we are reading this concept of monsoon, we will come across two important keywords. La Nina and El Nino. So if you are having La Nina, we can expect good rainfall. 
So El Nino, we will be not getting good rainfall. So we have bad rainfall or we can say there is deficit. So that is clearly seen in the month of this August. There is a 36 percentage of deficit. So what happens whenever we are facing El Nino, there will be decreased rainfall. So because of the decreased rainfall, so most of the agriculture in our country, which is rain fed agriculture and some regions, they will be experiencing droughts. And because of low rainfall, that will also decrease agricultural productivity. So whenever there is decreased agricultural productivity, that will affect food security of not only our country but even other countries because India is largest exporter also. For example, non-Basmati rice and Basmati rice to other countries. Is that clear? Will you connect the points here? So whenever you are reading any topic, you should not read in an isolated manner. You have to connect with the other subjects as well. So now let us try to see what is this concept of withdrawal or retreating of monsoons. So don't confuse with this word. So withdrawal of monsoon is also called as retreating of monsoons. So retreating means nothing but this winds, they are moving back. And whenever they are moving back, it is a gradual process or it is a slow process. So the withdrawal of monsoon, where it begins? It begins in northwestern states of India in early September. And by the month of mid-October, so the withdrawal of this winds happens completely in the northern part. That means we can say in mid-October, so winter will be starting in the northern part first. And the withdrawal from the southern half of the peninsula is very much rapid. So once the withdrawal which has happened in the northern part, in the southern part, it is a very fast process. And by early December, the monsoon has withdrawn from the rest of the country. So India will be free from this monsoonal winds by the end of early December. And the withdrawal which takes place progressively from north to south. So whenever you are talking about this monsoon winds, so they will be progressing from north towards Okay, from south to north, so, so from south to north, the winds will be moving, but the withdrawal, we can see they will be moving from north towards south. Okay, so this is a very important thing. And the next one here is the months of October and November. So these months are very much important because these months we can see there will be retreating monsoon. So whenever the winds are all going back, sometimes we can also experience the rainfall in Tamil Nadu region. Okay. Okay, so this is about this topic and the monsoon retreats from western Rajasthan by the first week of September and later on it will be withdrawing from Gujarat, western Ganga plain and central islands by the end of this month of September. And this retreating monsoon, how can we see in the sky? So there will be no rainfall, that means no formation of clouds. So we can see clear skies are seen and there is rising of temperature. So because of this rising of temperature, so normally we call it as October heat. So there is increasing of temperature in the month of October and we can see there is a clear skies. So this concept is called as October heat. So here you have to remember this October heat, it is related to this retreating monsoon. Is that clear? Okay, so now let us move on to next topic. It is about war in Caucasus. So as I said here, you have to know about Nagarno, Karabagh region. And here you have to see it is a conflict between which countries?
and you have to see whether there is any influence of other countries for example here there is influence of russia and next one is you have to see even map so in map you have to see what are the resources which are present here and even you can see like nearby water bodies or if there is any river which is located there or not so all these things are important from your map point of view and you have to do this map work so now let us see this topic in detail so here why it is in news so actually this nagano karabag is in news from last 5 to 6 years onwards but here now it is in news because azerbaijan launched a military operation in this disputed territory that is nagano karabag region so because of this attack it led to huge casualties and that also increased the intensity of tension between these two countries okay so actually the region that is nagano karabag region so which is under part of azerbaijan but the population of this but the population of this nagano karabag region is mostly armenians so because of this this is issue okay so what happened so from decades onwards we are having the conflict because of this ethnic armenians but from last 4 to 5 years there is increased increased tensions and especially from 2020 onwards the intensity had been increased okay and if you see this nagorno karabakh conflict so it is an ethnic conflict and it is a territorial dispute between armenia and azerbaijan so it is very important and the centers on this nagorno karabakh region they predominantly armenian populated but this region is present within the boundary or the borders of this azerbaijan so actually so the ceasefire agreement which is mediated by russia so there is influence of russia here and when this agreement was signed in year 1994 itself okay and if you are talking about this area which is now governed by separatist armenians and they are called as nagorno karabakh autonomous oblast okay now this region even though it is present under the boundary of azerbaijan now it is governed by the separatist armenians so those are called as nagorno karabakh autonomous oblast and now let us see some facts regarding this azerbaijan so azerbaijan it is a former soviet republic nation and this region is bounded by caspian sea and caucasus mountains okay so that is very important and the capital here is baku okay and now let us have a look over the map here so here we have armenia and this yellow color part is azerbaijan and this brown color is this nagorno karabakh region and this is a disputed region and if you are talking about the countries which are sharing boundary with these two countries here is we have iran and we have turkey here and this part is georgia and here we have russia and towards left we have caspian sea so here azerbaijan which have access to caspian sea but this armenia is a land locked country do not have any access to this caspian sea so this is very important is that clear now let us see next topic it is children a key at missed demographic in ai regulation so here you have to see which countries came up with which type of regulation of this artificial intelligence please do research and let me know in the comment box like china us european union okay so now let us see this topic in detail so if we are talking about artificial intelligence regulation so artificial intelligence is nothing but it is an ability of computer or it is an ability of a robot okay ability of control ability of computer robot which controlled by a computer we are using computer and we are controlling these things 
to do task so these tasks will be normally done by humans okay because if you want to do that task we need intelligence and we also need discernment so discernment means nothing but to judge whether it is right or wrong so i think you might have watched the movie robo so in that movie robo so there will be one fire accident so in that fire accident robo will be bringing one uh, lady okay one girl without dress right so yes we can use robots but they do not think like whether what are the actions they are doing so they are ethically correct or not okay so what are the command we are giving so they will do that so they will be not thinking about whether it is right or wrong okay so these are the some things that we have to think regarding this artificial intelligence so because of this whenever we are using this artificial intelligence so there are lot of issues regarding this ethical dilemmas or ethical issues will be also involved there so now let us see what is the need of this regulation so here it aims to address ethical questions and implementation challenges and even various sectors like from healthcare to education and even in finance energy we are using this artificial intelligence so we need a proper regulation and the legislations whenever which are coming up by the other countries so they are focusing on striking the balance between the uptake of artificial intelligence while mitigating or preventing the harms as well so why we need this type of regulations to control this artificial intelligence so first one is yes there are some risk involved so we don't know the certainty of this risk right so because of this use of artificial intelligence which is increasing in our lives day by day because we are moving towards more advancement so the capability of various tasks are there for example artificial intelligence is recommending music driving cars and even detecting cancer etc so because of this there is also increased risk and next one is black box some artificial intelligence tools they are so complicated so they are very very complicated that they are like a black box that means nothing but people who are creating them itself they don't know like how it is going to be used in the future so for example in that same robot movie so the robo which is mainly made to help for the army but because of insertion of that red chip into that robot so what happened so it is behaving oppositely right okay so in that way we don't know like what will be happening in the future and even the person who created that might not be knowing about the future implications and this one is many a times there will be inaccuracy and biases is also seen because whenever you we are using this facial recognition software so it is not uh, identifying this blacks so because of this yes we can see some problems in this tools and next one is here chatbots they are capable of producing high quality content okay so that content already written by the humans so sometimes it may or may not be accurate and next one is unsure of future behavior so artificial intelligence is also having a great challenge that so unlike traditional engineering systems designers they cannot sure that how this artificial intelligence system they will behave in future and next one is when a traditional automobile was shipped out of a factory engineers then knew that how exactly it would function in the future but here for example self driving cars and as well as uh, whenever we are coming up with robots doing operations okay so we don't know what will happen in the future so these are some important things that will say is that yes there is a need of artificial intelligence and what is the way forward here so way forward here is so we have to regulate this artificial intelligence like we can create simple regulatory frameworks so in this simple regulatory frameworks first we have to define what are the capabilities of this artificial intelligence and we have to identify susceptible to misuse or not like that and government need to prioritize the data privacy 
and according to that governments need to come up with this data protection bills in their countries or data protection acts in these countries and they have to focus on security and business ensuring the business have the access to the data and mandatorily we have to eliminate this black box approaches so that we can bring transparency and accountability in the system and next one here is we have to formulate effective regulations here policy makers they need to strike a balance between the scope of regulation okay so in this way here we can regulate this artificial intelligence and next topic is about it's a long road to women's equality so this article which is talking about women's reservation bill which recently passed in the special session of parliament okay so now let us try to see about this gender equality so already we know that bill and the details of that bill we are going we are not going to discuss that once again so this bill name is nari shakti vandan adhiniyam you have to remember this names so now let us try to see what is the gender disparities and what are the challenges that is mainly faced by women in society so first one is in many areas of society still gender gaps are still prevalent and especially in some fields like including work education health everywhere so we can see there is inferiority complex right so there is lack of education for women and it is not the thing i am alone saying but even unesco unesco says that 129 million girls are out of school why because of poverty okay even though it is poverty whenever the families are facing poverty they are trying to sending they will try to send their son to the school but not their girl child and there is gender bias against females via violence child marriage exploitation etc and next important problem is regarding healthcare so women do not have the proper access to the healthcare especially women and girls and even women do not have the proper decision making in their reproductive health as well so in many countries like uh, india in the less developed countries so especially women in the rural areas they do not have the choice of making decision on their reproductive rights for example to have a baby or not to go with abortion or not okay so violence against women is also happening for example uh, for example you can talk about the sexual assault you can talk about domestic violence and even there is increased suicides of women is happening in india so that is a recent data that we studied in our data point and this one is gender discrimination is happening okay so here in understanding also men will be understanded better in the family rather than a woman and even in our society there are some social norms like whenever if you are treating the girls so we will be taking teddy bears to the girls and we are offering like motor vehicles or like different uh, things like cars we will be giving to the boy why so in our society we have that social norms okay girls used to play with these toys and boys used to play with that toys will you accept with me or not right so in this way here so there are lot of challenges that are facing by women so please think about what is the way forward how can we make this women empowered so whenever this reservation is going to be come into true means yes at, at least some women they will be entering into the politics and they will inspire the future generation so that we can achieve the gender equal society in the future okay so this is about this topic and i want to announce this course that is main science reading course that we are going to come up with a new batch in the startout sciences that is normally in the first week of october we are coming up with this new batch of this main science writing so in this course we are going to cover your entire gs syllabus which includes gs1 gs2 gs3 and gs4 so daily one question will be given based on the schedule and you need to write answer and you have to send your answer to our mail id so that the detailed evaluation of your answer is done and we are going to provide you the modal answer for your question and also there will be the live doubt clearing sessions and one to one mentorship and in that session we are going to write essay and case study as well 
so that you will be having a comprehensive ranch writing skills you will be developed within one year so if you are a beginner and if you are facing problem regarding writing answer and if you are having the fear to write answer and if you are lacking the proper answer writing skills you can come and join this course so that you will be benefited a lot and one more thing here is most of the questions in your recent upsc mains they had from our mains answer writing course from di directly itself so it is a very good happy thing that i want to announce this so try to join this course and if you want to join this course so please contact me on this number 8074765513 and even this is whatsapp number you can also text me on this number so that i will be providing you details regarding this course okay now let us move back to our paper and let us see this text and context so this topic it is about kaveri water conundrum so if you see this image here you can see farmer stage a protest by standing in kaveri water over kaveri water release issue in tamil nadu so actually this article says that supreme court said that yes karnataka need to release the water to tamil nadu so supreme court said that here about 5000 cubic feet per second water should be released to tamil nadu for 15 days so karnataka said that if you are daily releasing this 5000 cubic of water to tamil nadu it is against the interest of karnataka because even in karnataka some urban areas they are facing issue of drinking water crisis so even though in our uh, state itself so many states so many districts and uh, many urban areas so they are facing this crisis how can we share this water with tamil nadu so this is the idea or this is a issue from karnataka side but tamil nadu it is urgent need of water because 3 lakh acres of crop this this is a short term crop and this is called as kuruvai this is called as kuruvai so it already been raised and there are some reports which are saying that so this crops are also facing issues so there is urgent need of water so because of this the protest is doing by this farmer so they are demanding for water okay so this is about this topic and here you can see this article which is regarding parliament panel what it said about this multiple exit and multiple entry in this national education policy this topic we discussed in our yesterday's lecture in detail and if you move on you can move to this news page so most of the articles are political articles here you can see this article that is eight institutes they gave an array of reasons for joshi mat sinking so recently i think four to five months back we saw number of articles regarding this joshi mat sinking so now there are about eight premier institutes they went for the different studies regarding what might be the causes for this joshi mat sinking okay and they said that because of seismic activity because of construction urbanization without planning and because of increasing of population and poor drainage system so these are the some important factors that led to this joshi mat sinking okay here you have to think about way forward how can we save this ecologically ecologically in stable regions because this area which is present in himalayas and this himalayas are eng folded regions or eng folded mountains so they are tectonically very much active they are in stable regions so whenever we are going for this unplanned construction developmental activities dams so they are not much stable so that will leads to this type of things okay and next one is isro test engine for gaganyaan mission so you have to see what is this gaganyaan mission okay that's it from this topic and if you move on in this world page you can see one more important article that is philippines removes china's barrier in disputed shoalbag island so in the south china sea so there are some islands which are claimed by this china okay in south china sea they are the first one is parcel island next one is partly island 
and next one is scarborough island okay scarborough island so if you say this is china and here we have korea part and here we have japan and here we have southeastern nations and this part is called as south china sea region and here we have this island groups so these are the disputed areas between china and other countries which are sharing boundary with this south china sea and here you have to see with all which are those three islands that is parcel islands partly islands and scarborough islands and here you have to see this what is this nine dash line and even you have to link this topic with one more recent current affairs that is china came up with this 2023 map and it included this nine dash line also okay so this is about this topic and you have to do some map work here and here you have to see one important act that is banks told to display information on borrowers linked to surface act so your homework is today you have to do some research regarding the surface act so if you don't know about this i will be discussing in the tomorrow's class so these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture so if you really like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this rathore science academy thank you so much